Joining us now, Senator Rick Scott, Republican from Florida. Good to see you, sir. Are we to view that as you are at war with the Republican Party, different factions of the Republican Party, and the Democratic Party, and the White House? Where's the battle? I think the battle is to try to make sure we, we turn this country around, rescue the country. I think the woke left now controls the federal government. They control academia. They control Hollywood. Uh, the, you know, so I think we, the, the, you know, the real fight is, is we've got to take this country back. And so is my job as the chair of the National Republican Central Committee. We're trying to make sure we have great candidates. We raise our money. Uh, and we get a majority back. And I think we're going to get a majority yeah. back. Um, the yeah. Biden's numbers are really bad. So I think we're, I'm optimistic. Yeah, you know, you've, you've brought in hundreds of millions of dollars. There's no, there's no question about that. Churchill uh, once said, politics is war, except in politics you can die more than once. Uh, your comment on Mitch, uh, this is from President Trump ripping, ripping Mitch McConnell just a week ago. As far as Mitch McConnell, I'm not a fan. There's been no harsher critic than me. He's been absolutely terrible, very bad for the GOP. The sooner he leaves leadership, the better off the Republican Party will be. How do you walk this line of a incredible divide inside this party that you're trying to unite to take on the White House? Well, I, fo I focus on the voters and I focus on the issues. If you look at what voters are going to vote on, they're going to vote on, well, they'd like inflation to come down. They'd like to have a secure border. They'd like to have a president that's not weak on foreign policy. They'd like to be energy independent. So I won my race in 2010 because I talked about what was important to people. And I, it generally comes down to their job, uh, their kids' education, and public safety. So if our candidates focus on those issues, raise their money, and run good races, we're going to get a majority back because the country doesn't like where the, in the direction we're going. You can look at all the polls mm -hmm. and see how right now that you know the, the country is mad. No. And so I think we're I think we have every reason to believe. But it, you know it's it's what you have to do is you have to work every day, every day trying to talk to more voters. In my eight years as governor, I think I shook hands with five hundred thousand. Uh, people in my state, and that's how you win elections. You talk to people. Yeah, no, I, I, I remember covering you as governor. 57% uh, of U.S. households paid no federal income tax for 2021. This is from your economic growth plan. All Americans should pay some income tax to have skin in the game, even if a small amount. Currently, over half of Americans pay no income tax. I don't need to tell you that has become a talking point for the DNC. This is their ad. What Republicans' official agenda, just ask Rick Scott, raise income taxes on half of Americans. I'm not going to ask you if you take the plan back. Do you regret the way it was phrased and thus gave such an easy attack at? Absolutely not. Um, first off, go to rescueamerica.com. It's 11 steps, 128 policy points. And here's the point. There's a lot of people that, are, that could work and have decided not to work, and they've figured out how to live off uh, government. And we have a bunch of people that are out there, they're working hard, paying their income tax and property tax and sales tax. We have retirees that have paid in. And then it's not fair that we have people that, that you know, just want to live off uh, government. We can't do that. I grew up in a very poor family. I, watched, I remember what my mom told me. She said, when you go to church, I don't care if you can take a penny. You know, you, you're going to be part of this church and you're going to put money in the offering. I don't care if people pay a dollar. But we ought to be, we're all in this together. And, and by the way, we can't have a budget like what Biden's done. Do you realize in the last 20 years, we've had a 16% increase in the number of people living in this country, and we've had a four times increase in the federal budget. People are fed up with this stuff. But we got to make sure every, we're all participating in this, that you know, the people that can, if you can't, you can't. But you know, if, you, if you can work, mm -hmm. You got to get to work and participate in this. I only got 30 seconds. Is it possible that there are people who can, under your plan, work and participate, but still get government benefits? Because we know those kind of people are going to have Absolutely. to exist. Absolutely. We need okay. to have we need to have safety nets. You know, we need to have Medicare. We need to have Medicaid. We need to have Social Security. We need to have these programs. Now, what we got to do is we got to figure out how do we make sure they're properly funded. I mean, so I'm so frustrated because we just passed a bill that, you know, I didn't vote for it that, that hurt Medicare. Mm. Uh, Senator, it's always good to see you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I know another issue that we didn't able to get to that's near and dear to your heart is foreign policy. And I'd uh, love to have you back to talk Ukraine anytime, sir.
Okay, have a good day. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.